Oh, hey, come here. Look at that. Boom, boom, boom. Ha ha, bet your smartphone can do that now, can it? Okay, jokes aside, guys, I'm a complete beginner when it comes to cameras and chances are if you're watching this video, you're probably one as well. So today we're going to be talking about the Canon R50 and my experiences with it in the past like three weeks that I've owned it. Uh, so I actually had to choose between the Sony ZV-10 and this Canon R50 and I chose the Canon because of a few reasons which I'm going to share in these videos. So make sure that you click that like and subscribe button and let's get right into it. Alright, so let's first get the technical specifications out of the way and when it comes to that, the Canon R50 usually comes with its own kit lens and that would be the RFS 18 to 45 millimeters and that speaks almost nothing to me but probably it speaks some of you and when it comes to the camera itself it's a 24 megapixel mirrorless camera which is the cheaper version of a full frame camera because this comes at around 500 bucks if you take it like second hand and it's a complete steal for what it is now i know the 24 megapixels does not sound like something impressive to you after all you have your s24 ultra with its 200 megapixel shots but let's not forget that the camera phones are kind of like a numbers game they're just a gimmick and uh, an actual proper camera like this one which has a really big sensor and it can let in a lot more light and depending on the lens that you get can also take amazing pictures and it can certainly beat any smartphone out there but the primary purpose of this camera is not taking photos, it's actually recording videos, which serves very well content creators like you and me, people who want to just get started with YouTube, vlogging, any sort of content creation. Now this camera here is amazing, so let's check out what it can actually do. Alright guys, here's a sample footage with this camera with my studio lights, but I'd like to mention that you can also use natural light to get the best quality out of this camera. This is 4K 30fps, the absolute maximum that this camera can do, unfortunately no 60fps here, but I think that for 90% of people this would be plenty. And I also like to mention that this camera records in 6K and then downscales that footage to 4K so you can get this crystal clear image out of it and it's a substantial upgrade from any sort of smartphone that you can imagine. So I believe that most people would be very happy with this camera and this is left in automatic settings by the way. I haven't touched anything, I haven't meddled with the exposure, uh, aperture or anything like that. It's just fully automatic, straight out of the box quality. Now there is also the option of recording Full HD at 60fps and 120fps for some slow motion but I believe that the quality drops significantly and even though it's still pretty usable, it's still amazing because this is an actual camera, I will still stick to the 4K 30fps just because of that extra image quality. Alright, so you're gonna get a substantial increase in video quality when you buy this camera but let's talk a little bit about the disadvantages for people coming from other smartphones. Like, one of the main disadvantages when owning a camera is the battery life. The battery life on this thing will last you around an hour of continuous recording and that's not a lot of time, especially if you're recording in 4K. There is also the possibility of the camera overheating and turning itself off in the middle of what you're doing, which is not pleasant at all. Now this cannot happen with smartphones of course. But another thing is the audio quality and as you can hear from this recording the audio is not really the best. You would most likely need to buy a separate wired or wireless microphone just to be able to get a nice audio quality. I wouldn't rely on the built-in microphone, it's just not great. Another major disadvantage would be the stabilization inside of this camera. Now you see this camera offers stabilization, it's just very very bad, especially if you're coming from a smartphone. If you just pick up the camera and hold it in your hand and try to record something, you're gonna end up with such shaky footage that people would think that you had just way too much coffee in the morning. So you can use the built-in stabilization inside of this camera but it probably wouldn't do much and you would later have to import this video in some software and try to stabilize it further but that would only crop it in more. So. I believe that this camera is okay for vlogging but only if you have like a really good, like really expensive gimbal, uh, otherwise just stick to your talking head videos like this one and you're gonna get the best quality out of it. Now I would like to mention that this camera has plenty of video modes that you can choose from, for example the one that I'm using right now is especially designed for product reviews and uh, you can use it to focus very quickly on something and then defocus, it's almost like a smartphone. While the regular mode of this camera actually focuses super slowly and this one is actually perfect for reviewing everything. But all of this aside, can't you just see how amazing these Canon colors are and how amazing the details of this camera is? It's just awesome and it's the best way to ask someone to subscribe to your channel down below. 
Now here are a few interesting things about this camera. You have the compartment for the battery and the SD card down below and you can take them out really really easily and you can exchange the battery with a new one or charge it with a charger. And on the right side you have your mini HDMI port to hook this camera to an external monitor if you'd like and also your USB port through which you can transfer photos and also charge the battery as well. On the left side you have your microphone port so you can attach an external USB microphone. Another option is a wireless microphone like the DJI one for example and I think I'm gonna buy that pretty soon. On top of the camera you can also attach another microphone or different accessories for it. One interesting thing is that this camera also comes with an inbuilt flash which at this price point is rare and let's not forget about the display which can rotate any way that you like so you can always get that perfect shot no matter what you're up to. And I know that there are just too many buttons on this camera but they are pretty straightforward and if you take a look at it and what it says on the menu while you're switching and while you're clicking these buttons you quickly realize that it's actually pretty straightforward and pretty beginner friendly. Never mind me needing a few days just to realize that this camera lens can actually be closed and opened uh, if you just twist it in the right way. So there we have it guys, I've tried to cover most of the basic features of this camera, especially as a beginner who doesn't understand so much, but there are a lot of things that you can mess with and a lot better quality out of the pictures and the videos that you can get and I would leave that up to you but if you found any value in this video then I would appreciate it if you like this video and comment down below on what you think about this camera. Thank you so much for sticking until the end guys and have a wonderful day and week ahead from me. Bye bye.